We're back with you to watch your ag commodity trade. I'm Marlon Bowling, your tour guide to the ag commodities. I'm joined now by Scott Geekus, and he is in Chicago, right at the edge of the trading floor. He's with Walsh Trading. Scott, I wanted to uh, just quickly review the numbers, the major numbers that came out from that report yesterday from USDA, in case anybody missed them. Let's take a look at what we had for the uh, final crop production numbers, or I shouldn't say final, but for the uh, September Addition. So we had the corn yield pegged at uh, 168.2 bushels per acre with a total production of 13.8, we'll call it, uh, billion bushels. Soybean yield 47.9 bushels per acre with a production of 3.633 billion bushels. Now those were both a little higher than expected, but they were lower than last month's estimates. And then if we look at the carryouts for the U.S., and I want to focus on the 2019 and 2020 numbers. We had corn at 2.19 billion bushels. That was quite a bit higher than expected there. They were looking for a number under 2 billion. So I mean 640 million, and that was lower than expected. The wheat at 1.014 billion was, of course, right on the money. Now let's uh, take a look at the market reaction since then. Uh, you're surrounded by people that have been working with us now for the past 24 hours with those numbers, and the corn has really come off its highs to go flat on the day. December unchanged at 367 and a quarter. Is that the extent of the rally now? Uh, well, it's going to be very interesting. you got to remember, typically this is the time of year where you see that seasonal bottom. Whether or not that's going to hold true this time, we have no idea. We have to wait and see how this is really going to play out. You know, with all the headlines and all the Trump effect going back and forth, I mean, pretty much anything could happen at any moment's notice. All you need is one tweet, and it could completely change the game. So with Trump coming out before, delaying those tariffs right before the crop report, crop report came out with for soybeans it was pretty much neutral corn was slightly bearish but it when trump came out and delayed those tariffs it caused all the funds all the traders to start the short covering we had a big bump in all the prices ahead of the report and it, then it just continued to follow through which you're seeing a little bit of continuation today corn's pulling back a little bit as expected based on a slightly bearish report but do you think this is just some uh, profit-taking heading into the weekend then uh, on the part of the traders? Uh, with everything that's come out within the last few hours, about 48 hours or so, I'm assuming, because if, if it was me, I wouldn't want to hold a position into this weekend because you never know what's going to come out. All right. Now, uh, looking at the corn trade, we talked about it being flat. Let's look at soybeans. And uh, soybeans had some fairly steep gains uh, this morning early on. Right now, November soybeans are just kind of fading. We have them three and a half higher at 899. You know, they got up as high as 903 and a half there for a while. Uh, we've come off of that four and a half cents now already. So uh, it remains to be seen if they'll hang on to gains or not heading into the close. On the wheat market, um, in Chicago, we have that December a penny and a quarter higher at 485. This has been an adventure going higher and lower during the day. Kansas City, uh, last time we looked, it was down a little bit. It's still down a penny and a half on December at 402. And the Minneapolis wheat has been chopping around as well today, uh, currently down about two cents at 5.05. Um, overall, how do you think the trade is positioned here? Because now we're going to be starting to see a ramp up in fall harvest activity moving forward. Yeah, and that's what we're going to be focusing on in the near term future is what are those harvest numbers going to be, look at, going to be looking like um, going forward? It just really depends on how much they can actually get done. So that's definitely going to be, be a very big determination. One thing I want to point out is when they, with the report coming out with the yields, the last time of this year going into December, so the yields were significantly reinstated. So what I mean by that is the yields were definitely lowered a little bit. So you have private surveys coming out with the yields that were much lower than what came out. So if those numbers are readjusted to a little bit lower coming in the next few months, I mean, that could definitely take a big effect on, on these markets moving forward. And there was a lot of uh, discussion after that report came out yesterday about USDA's implied pod weight on soybeans. And that's going to be something that will be debated moving forward now. Uh, Scott, we'll take a break, and then I'll talk with you about the cattle and hog markets shaping up here on a Friday when we return. Scott Geekus joins us. He's with Walsh Trading in Chicago. And as we turn our attention over to the cattle market, this uh, cattle market is just like being pulled ahead today on the nearby contracts, Scott. Uh, a lot of analysts wondering if it's really trading on its own or not. Let's take a look at where we now stand as we get closer and closer to the end of our trading week. 
Uh, on the live cattle board right now, we are just ever so slightly higher. On nearby October, just up three cents at 98.75. December still unchanged. And February, now 27 higher. And as has been the case all morning long, the far out deferreds for next year are just a touch lower. On the feeder cattle market, here we go with a look at the uh, October contract. It is now trading 30 higher at 134.80. Yes, it's higher, but yes, it's a dollar off of its earlier high today. We have November 22 higher at 134.13. Lean hogs, uh, Kind of playing their own game today, really. We have October now up 245 at 6563. December and February have been lock limit up here for several hours. Four and a half dollars higher today, and uh, we have the April trading 355 higher. So, your uh, colleagues behind you there on the trading floor, I'm sure there's a lot of talk about what's going on in the livestock trade. Can you dissect what the market action is about today? Right. Well, right off the bat, the fundamentals aspect, the fundamental story in the protein complex right off the bat is definitely bullish. So if you look at the cash cattle trade, it was a little bit about $3 bump around 99 or so. That's supportive. But if you look at the weekly exports, they were both the, the hogs as well as cattle were above the four week average. It's definitely a supportive aspect, which you're seeing a little bit move higher. Now, when you're looking at the hog story, which is a soap opera in itself, but the exports are pretty strong. You have record, second on record amount of imports to China, even with these high tariffs. So if we get any type of deal, whether it be just a partial deal or a full deal, we expect that hog prices to jump pretty quickly. And that's why you're seeing limit up yesterday. Some of the contracts are limit up today, but in general, they're all over the place. We had a point in time where the front month in the hog and the hogs were a little bit lower earlier this morning, and then the buyers just stepped in and just ran it all the way up. Yep. Be nice if we could just set up a big, long conveyor belt from the U.S., just put the hogs on them here and let them dump off on the other side there and just keep it going. Uh, thanks, Scott, for talking with us. Appreciate it, sir. Scott Geekus of Wall Trading. He's located right there in Chicago.